the uh, epoxy is cured. And it seems to be fairly stiff in there. And uh, I remember we added that uh, layer of three inch tape over the top uh, after the wrapping. So let me go ahead and clean this up and get rid of the boogers so I don't cut myself. There's a little bit of selvage on here, roughness I want to sand away on the edge. I'm also thinking, I had a brain fart this morning as I was walking, is, there's a lot of having to do, I know the metal is probably going to be stronger and we'll do the drilling and the test screwing of a piece into here, but I got to thinking that maybe it's much easier to take a small piece of wood, this is maple, and then uh, shape it so it conforms, you know, put a little radius on it so it conforms and then glue that epoxy it on it stand a little bit prouder we could make it rounded out so then that the uh, where's the little thing uh, so that you stick one of these things on here wouldn't need be have to be that big but just big enough to give it some wood on each end to keep from splitting out but that's yeah you can see how much thicker it would be this is a much cleaner approach but it can be a might be a pain let me clean this up and i've cleaned this end up and I've, this is the uh, the thickness and here is the uh, old one you can see how much thicker that two layers two extra layers and you can see them right here of uh, that glass cloth or tape and then the uh, the three inch tape on top of it get the right end here you can see how much thicker it is and let's see what we got let's go over to the thick part here you can tell between here uh, this is the side that doesn't have the extra two three inch tape on it and this one does so we'll go ahead and measure this out a little over a sixteenth. Yeah, so I'm happy. Even with uh, on the thinner side, it's just a hair over a sixteenth. If you can see that or not. So, six wraps and the sleeving should do it. Now we'll go ahead and uh, drill on the holes here. Well, I got my hole drilled through in that uh, that strapping tape is pretty pretty tough stuff and I need I'm going to drill more holes. I need to get uh, a new bit. But Well, I I just reapplied <laughs> myself and getting the screw initially through that metal, which is a good thing. Oh yeah, it's tighten that baby down tight. And I don't need it as long. Let me drill one more and we'll do a little maybe a test strength. Feats of strength. <laughs> These aren't not gonna strip out. Those babies are in there, so this this works pretty good and clean, so you can see I can use a lot. These aren't; these were just screws I had. I'd bought in some uh, 12s this morning, but they were too big to fit through the the holes. And I was thinking with the 12, I had a larger diameter, I had more surface area to catch on the metal plate. But these are uh, tens, so I need a couple uh, 10 by looks like maybe halves, three quarters, just to be safe. That thing, I don't need a test of strength. This is not going to go anywhere. So we will come back on something else. There was another little test I did yesterday, and I just took the test subject out. Uh, it was that um, that tarp, that Costco tarp? I uh, epoxied both halves and uh, wrapped, put some bisqueen on both sides so it didn't stick to everything. Put a heavy weight on it, so. 
it didn't stick. So, lucky me. <laughs> I was worried. Let me show you something else here. I had, yesterday I had wrapped this again with some more Visqueen. Uh, you know, a strip about, I don't know, maybe six inches wide out of some scrap I had I taped together and I wrapped it around. And uh, then I tried to tug on it because I got my, my cord down here through. I saved one of the uh, eyes in that tarp and put a cord through it and I couldn't get the dang thing to move. So that came off. So I had, uh, I got a roll of shipping tape a couple days ago and so I made a whole, whole series of passes all up and down here because I didn't know I had a panic attack I didn't, and I didn't know if that uh, epoxy, let me get out of the way of the light here, I didn't know if the way of that epoxy was going to, um, when I penetrate the, the inner layer of the two inch tape and then adhere itself to the, uh, to that tarp material. Because uh, it's kind of rough on the outside and kind of porous, but it looks like it uh, it wouldn't uh, take at least the silver side. The silver side didn't. So, but I went ahead and put shipping tape up and all up and down it. Which, because uh, I had said I was going to put in the reinforced nylon tape, uh, the shipping tape's pretty is is tough, and so there's enough layers on there. Plus that Costco tarp was really tough to begin with. It's at 14 mils, or you know the real thick stuff. And so uh, it's going to be more than more than uh, heavy enough to do that. But um, I did have a panic attack. Okay, what I'm about to show you is a Red Barn trade secret. So I don't want this going anywhere else. I was ruminating for a long time as to about how to get this inside the uh, all the other layers, and then uh, when I was doing the other part that we just drilled, it kind of dawned on me. And then this, this piece has been cut to the length a little bit longer than what the, uh, the track for the gooseneck is going to be. And it's been rounded over for a, about a two inch radius. And then I, uh, I uh, knifed the ends a little bit. So, so I got my two inch down there. And then we'll stick another layer of two inch over the top of it. Ah. Let's tape that down before I put more tension on it. Probably going to put some rubber bands around this to hold it in place while I wet it out, which will be next. These are our uh, bicycle tube rubber bands. We used those on when we were making the uh, the oars. Let's put this guy back down here to the end. And I will probably wet out in the middle and go to the end. And one more down here on the end to hold the tape. These same little things have been indispensable. Oh, now I'm going to wet this out. Now it's shaped, when it cures, it'll be shaped to the lower section of the mast. And I've got one more piece here. I should probably set up for it to for a uh, a cleat on the side. So I'll make another one down in here. It just needs to be just a little guy. So, and I probably should have moved this down further. But let me get the other one on, and then we'll wet out. Well, I have those two on the lower part of the mass prepped. One's for the track and the other one's for a cleat. And then I have the two for the upper, uh, the, the, the amount of 318s and the little blocks. So let me get out the, uh, get out the silver tip and we'll uh, start wetting them out. I've got the other two wet out. 
So I'll go ahead and give these a coat. I may wrap them with some plastic just to uh, compress them some more. I may let them set for a while and then cut the rubber bands off. Comments or you know uh, Google Pluses, even though I hate Google Plus, uh, from people that are saying, "Well, you didn't sand between the coats." Well, I don't know if I said it, and especially on the real popular one where I'm wetting out and smoothing out the glass. And, uh, the System Threes, this, this when you get into the what I call the Mercedes and Lexus qualities of uh, epoxies. Uh, System 3 has uh, 72 hours between coats and you can still get a chemical to chemical bond without having to uh, sand and then you're and then you're left with once you you get your full cure 72 hour full cure and sanding then you you're working with a mechanical bond as opposed to a chemical so I guess I need to re to state that every time I break out the silver tip. And I don't know, I, this is a little side trip here, I'm going to vent against Microsoft. They've been forcing that Windows 10, and I'm re, I've been happy with Windows 7, and I kept wondering, why is my computer so damn slow sometimes, or the hard drive is were in a way and I'm not doing anything and I'm thinking well what somebody uh, you know taking over my computer stealing all my data and then I go online and I find out that Microsoft has been downloading in behind on your computer almost six gigabytes of Windows 10 information even if you don't want to sign up for the damn program And so I was, you can go online, there was three KB files that I found, and you can go into the control panel, Google, Google that term, uh, you know, getting rid of Windows 10 on my Windows 7 machine. And there's three KB files in there that you'll go into uh, uh, control panel, programs, and then select these three numbers, and that'll get rid of it. But the big file, the... Uh, what the hell they call that? A BT file. I went. It, I found it through the hidden opening up my hidden files. But as the minute my own computer, the damn thing won't let me uh, delete the file. So this is the last operating system I'm ever going to get from Microsoft. I'm. Just, and we're going to wrap this rascal. Tight. Get it to really conform to the, uh, and I'm not worried too much about the uh, glass under the bands because they seem to be. Holding their own.